I remember when he passed, it was March 26th. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think like almost immediately after that, or even when we kind of knew that the end was near, I had just put in my mind that, okay, so we have to start preparing for my mom's transition to Georgia. When your father passed, um, you had been through a lot with um, your mom through her heart issues and having open heart surgeries and stuff like that. Cancer survivor and all that. Yeah. And seeing, just like I'm very close to my uh, my my parents, especially, you know, and, and I talking to my mom often, I saw how often you spoke with your mom. Mm-hmm. And now losing your father, this is a really tough time because we had actually just lost Gigi too. Yep. That same, very around that time, just soon after. Yeah, so started. I mean, so let the audience know. So we lost my dad on, excuse me, March 26th. Yeah. Um, my birthday is April 2nd. Yeah. And then we lost Gigi on April 7th. And so how the succession of events went was daddy's loss was a week before my birthday. And then Gigi's loss was a week right after my birthday. So my birthday fell right in the middle of two really big Tragic. losses. So it's like, you know, you're dealing with, is the world gonna end with this this COVID thing going on? Um, there's no hope at that time, there's no vaccines. And what really touched me and where I felt it you couldn't be there for your mom and you couldn't be there for any type, like to have said goodbye to your father. Um, And so I feel when you said, you know, I moved here for you and we're going to get into that story, how that came about um, between the two of you guys, I just want you to both know, you know, as my mother-in-law and as my husband, um, seeing you and people I don't think really, understood this was the very first year we started great homes atl so yes. this is the launch of our brokerage firm in january of 2020 yep. you have the passing of your father this COVID thing is going on you're worried about me going out showing houses am i going to catch something ariana's living with us we lose it was, Gigi. It was tough, it was, it, a tough it, period. it was a lot i mean i almost forget about it to an extent but when you really break it down and put it in context yeah you're right this was our shot at launching our business, not knowing that we were going to have a pandemic. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and just not even like in the middle of it, right at the onset of when we were coming out here as Great Homes ATL, all those losses, boom, 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 boom. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then we're in COVID with a complete mm-hmm. lockdown. So now we have the pressure of, okay, well, we're now our own business. Yeah. That's just how we make our money. In the middle of a pandemic. So now we actually have to survive. We have to make money. So Mark is out here showing houses. In the middle of a pandemic, we don't even know what COVID is at right. this point. Um, and then just all that that pressure and that weight of like trying to deal with the loss. I'm still also working Graham's ATL, but also in my corporate, corporate position as well. It was a lot. And you're not being able to like, as a son, feel like you're there for your mom, but you really can't because at that time there was travel restrictions and so much. Mm, so much was going on. on. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't able to be there for you. I wasn't able to be there, um, obviously, to be with my father. And I think when all that was happening, I wasn't even thinking about. I wasn't thinking about like even not being able to be there for myself. Yeah. Which hindsight is always twenty twenty, and I think I spent all of twenty twenty all of 2021 and most of 2022, just like, you just keep moving forward. Okay, Mm -hmm. my mom is moving here. I got to figure that out. I got to make that happen. My mom is here. I got to make sure she's like, there was never that period for me to really go backwards in Mm -hmm. time to say, wow, for 2020, I never actually took the time that was probably definitely needed to grieve, not only the loss of my father, but to sort of mourn the guilt that I felt for not being able to be there with my father, for not being able to be there with and for my mother. And so like, I never had an opportunity to stop and grieve those moments, yeah. which through therapy and counseling, those are grievable moments mm-hmm. that I should have taken a pause and said, time out for everything else. I need to think about me. And so, yeah, you're right. It was a yeah. lot. It starts putting in motion this transition of the Russells moving to uh, Georgia and greater Atlanta. So. Eric uh, moved in very quickly. It was about September of 2020. You guys came down for a trip. Mm-hmm. And well, what's kinda... significant about that trip, I want to call this out okay. because when you guys came down, it was still during the height of a pandemic. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
Right, because I had to drive down. Because you had to drive, and that's why I remember that. Right. So there were no flights, and you have health issues, so we definitely couldn't, you know, increase your risk there. And so I remember you guys came down in September. Yep. Eric drove, and Eric stayed. <laughs> Eric said he started like he was going for interviews that week, yep. and he actually yeah. uh, landed landed in the trucking industry, and then um, he moved right. In he took us. her back. No, yes. he took her back. He, he took her back. But he, he came down for us. your visit, right? Yeah. Keep me mm-hmm. honest. He came down. You were going to come down for I think it was about a week, mm-hmm. just to get away, just because we hadn't seen each other and mm-hmm. it was during the pandemic. So he came down. You both stayed for that week. Little did we know, I guess, during that week that he was here, he was looking for a job to stay. Yes. So he found the job, and then, but he had to take you back. Right. And so he drove you back up to Philly and came right back down with his stuff packed up in a bag, ready to, like, become a Georgia resident. And I remember for me at that point, um, we hadn't talked about it, you and I, because I had gotten my smack on the wrist months earlier when you said, stop asking me about moving to Georgia. I'll come when I'm ready. And so I had learned that, you know what? My feelings have been hurt enough. I'm not even gonna bring up the topic again. But when Eric said that he was gonna stay, I remember getting hopeful. Like, well, what else would she be staying up there for? Because now my dad is gone. My brother is now down here. So what else would she be waiting up there for? But my pride and my ego would just not be put out there to be bruised again. So even though I was hopeful, crossing my fingers, my eyes, my toes, and anything else that I could cross, I just refused to bring up the, Mom, do you want to come to Georgia again? Because I felt like I didn't You'd smack. You'd get smacked again. Yeah, I didn't want to get smacked again. I'm probably getting smacked. So. And then, you know, so Eric ends up, this is how this amazing story comes about. Eric is staying with us for about four or five months. And all of a sudden, he's starting to talk about purchasing a home. And so I think for you, it's probably like, you probably wanted to see, is this really going to work out with Eric? Is he going to come back to Philly? Is he really going to stay? And now all this stuff is really happening. So now you're, you know, you're still going through this grieving process. Now we're, you know, we're about 2021 now. What's it like? And what are your, what's your thought process? Um, because we will talk about the actual, when he went under contract, which was around October of 2021. But Mm -hmm. that summer of 2021, you have both your kids down here. It's now more than a year since your husband has passed. What is it like still being in that home? What's the process of even starting to consider um, selling and moving to Georgia? Okay, first of all, let me just say this. Curtis, you have always been there for me. Always. We may not see eye to eye sometimes. We may fuss at each other, <laughs> whatever. But you've always been there for me. So during the time that your father passed and we were going through the COVID thing and you weren't able to get there, I already knew in my heart that if it was a way for you to be there, you would have been there. So I don't want you to think otherwise for that. It feels good to hear that, but I, and I, and I, it's, but it's so, something you have to believe yeah, yourself. Yeah. But I'm just saying, from my perspective, I just want you to know that because I know that you've always been there for me through thick and thin. You've always been there for me. So that's, that, that is just not an issue. Um, with, with Eric, I know a lot of people thought that once Eric came down here, I was going to say, oh, my baby, I'm not going, I'm going. I still was not ready when Eric ready. came here either. Mm-hmm. I was not ready. It had to be um, my decision. Uh, one of the things, you know, I always, always kept in my mind about coming to Georgia. Uh, it wasn't, honestly, it wasn't for Eric. It wasn't for your dad. It was for you. Because I know that you really wanted me to be here. I always knew that. That's another thing. Um it was just one night. I was in, the sh- in my she shed and I left to go to the bathroom and I just, this voice just came and just said, it's time for you to go. I don't know. It wasn't a voice. Are you sure you weren't drinking? No, nope. I'm telling you. <laughs> she said, I, was drink. I was not drinking. I was not drinking. Well, I don't, what I'm not, I don't, I don't even drink. drink. I never had a drink in my life. Yeah. So, um, I, I, it was just something in my head, I guess. And it just said, it's time to go. So then I went to the bathroom, I came, I got in the bed, and the voice said, it's time to go. I said, well, it's three o'clock in the morning, where the heck am I going? I think she was, she may have been smoking that stuff. <laughs> she doesn't do that no, either. I don't smoke that reef stuff either. <laughs> so 
So then I just said, and then the next day, the next morning I got up, I remember it clear as day. I remember like somebody saying it's time to go. Mm. And I believe that's when I called and said, I'm ready to go. Yes. It, it was just my time. And when you called and said that, and you were like, uh, I was like, yeah, right, like, whatever, whatever. She's in the mood. Because it just was, it didn't, it, it came so like spontaneously. It wasn't like we had been talking about it. Mm -hmm. It went from like, we have been talking about it to the point where you said, I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'll let you know. To where we had just completely stopped yeah. talking about it. Eric had moved down here. Mm -hmm. We still weren't talking about it. And then one day it was like, yeah, I need you guys to go find me a house. And I remember when you said it, I was like, don't even wish your time. She's not going anywhere. So yeah. we didn't believe it. <laughs> yeah, so first we were like, you know, you know, where what, what price point are you thinking? And whatever your number was at the time, it was. And so we were like, well, she's not going to be able to get a brand new house for that. Right. Um, so she started, like a lot of people out there, I'm sure you went on Zillow and all these right. different sites. And she starts sending us these houses <laughs> that are like split level. So for the audience out there, split level is like you walk in and you could go down the staircase, go up. There's a lot of stairs in that house. Yeah. And for somebody that had stairs in their current house, did not need that because of your heart condition and stuff. Um, we just, I was like, she is sending us all these <laughs> but houses with stairs in it. But like, that's what made it more. On. That's what made me not take it so right. seriously. Like, I, I like, didn't know any better. And right. I, I guess I we didn't know that you didn't know any better. So for me, I'm like, okay, she's just playing with us now. Like split level. There's no way she's gonna go from the steps she has yeah. to these step. Don't even waste your time. So <laughs> and then what happened? So of course, you know, I am the home buy expert, but such in the same new home, plug, the plug. new home industry, Mr. Hey Guys himself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, you know, I had heard, I had, I had one experience maybe, it was probably 10 years earlier where my, at one time my father and stepmother were considering, mm -hmm. um, you know, moving down here. And I, that's the first time I had heard of active adult community, but I hadn't really had a big experience with uh, an aging population. Of, uh, <laughs> but in Georgia, like it started to become a thing, like Florida became a thing, Georgia became a thing. And so I did start doing my research, going into MLS, doing Google searches. And I sent you a actual uh, community that you ended up buying in, which we'll talk about that story. But it was actually once you start seeing the prices and you're like, oh, that, that's almost like too fancy for me. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's going to be out of my range. Do you remember, let me ask you, do you remember, um, we were touring one of the model homes and I remember you saying, oh, we should send this to your yes, mother. I remember that moment. And you may not know this, but when he sent it and we looked at the video back of the floor plan, I think you actually captured me saying in the video, but yeah, I, I said, know. I would love for my mother to have something like this because if anybody has worked hard enough throughout their whole life to deserve this, it would be her. But I don't think that she would ever pull the trigger yes. on something like this. I agree. Was it my Emerson? It was the house that she picked. And it so it was. So how that how this came about is we actually, for your price point, we thought this other community. Uh, in this area called Villa Rica was going to be an area that probably... Why well, y'all was trying to be nice about it? It was going to fit the budget. It was going to fit the budget. It was going to fit the budget. But right. as we saw, it was a nice, yeah. beautiful community and everything like that, but it had not just 55 and older. It had Anybody could live there. Anybody that could live there. And so... Not like my community. And then when we drove out of it, it was like, you know, here you are, you know, growing up in Philly, in the city, right? You're used to being able to go anywhere around the block, mm -hmm. shopping and all that kind of stuff. So we said that community that we first sent you that you did like, but you're probably like, it's probably too much for me. We drive up to where we're like, it's kind of close to the area and we're driving by and we start seeing home goods and TJ Maxx and JC Penny, you know, like, then we get to the community that is only like four or five minutes away. And now it's a gated entrance. And we're like, oh my God. So we go into the actual sales center and they had about three or four models. Yep. And I said, you know, I'm going to do one of my Hey Guys tours and just, you know, record this for you. And so all of a sudden we open that front door and it's like a huge, like just, it's almost like, you know, that moment where they're like, 
<laughs> the light comes on and it's just so yeah. beautiful. And so we send you that video afterwards and just talk to the audience what was your first impressions when you we saw these I'm seeing like new homes. Well, when I first seen the new homes, first of all, I just I just felt like, you know, these it's, it's, these homes are just too beautiful for me. Uh, it's it just really not because then you sent me. Uh, I, I got the uh, the blue was a Newberry. Newberry. I got that Emerson. Floor plan. These are floor plans. I yeah. had it was like three different ones you sent me. Harrison, Newberry, those Emerson, are the, right. and I think there was one more. I can't remember. And I kept looking at them, and I kept looking at them, and I would show my sister. I was just you know, and I'm like you know, everybody was saying, "Oh, this is not girl. You ain't going nowhere." Oh, you ain't going nowhere. But at that point, I'd already made up my mind to go. Yeah. I said, I'm going. And um, I just felt that those houses were too, uh, um, th they were nothing that I had ever experienced. Like, the, the, the main thing was everything was open. Mm -hmm. And in my house, everything had its own separate room. Right. So I'm and like. levels, too. Well, like, I remember the joke is, I remember that. So my mom is the one that you've been in the house, 22nd Street, you were there for years. Mm -hmm. 35 and years. 35 years. And so, you know, if you grew up in the city, yeah. you already know who Pookie is, who <laughs> this one is, and you already know who could give you the hookup. You know the plug, right? right? If right. you need new walls, you need new cabinets, you know the plug to call to get it at the plug price, right. right? And so my mom had been in this house and in this neighborhood in Philly for so long that she knew everybody. Uh -huh. So everything that was in her house, everything that she had updated, it was still stuff that was updated. She had new kitchens and new floors and stuff like that. But I would always try to tell her from our perspective, being in, in real estate, where we are actually buying and selling real estate, mom, like I understand that you're getting hooked up with Mr. Pookie to get that kitchen done, but Mr. Pookie is not doing it to the level of quality and standard that somebody's gonna come and give you top dollar for your house. And so for a while, she was so prideful about your own house yeah. that she would almost take offense. Like I was offending her, like mom, like I know your kitchen is nice and all, but because Mr. Pookie did it, it's not on par with what, and so we fought that way for a while. Like I'm not going down there just cause everything is white and I don't need this and I don't need that. And it wasn't until you went and looked, you went to an open house mm -hmm. and it wasn't until you went to an open house to see for yourself, like, Oh, uh, the openness. Although the, the although the 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 cabinetry and things the like quality. that, quality it was cheap in there. But the everything Aesthetic. was white. Aesthetic. Everything, you know, they had all the little doodads. They had this. They had that. And I'm like, they had the little lights like this. And you know, they had all the the. And know, so it was the aesthetic that I think seeing it in person made you say, "Oh, now I see what my son is saying." It wasn't that I was ever saying, "Oh, mom, your house is bad." It was, I'm saying, well, mom, the structure of your house is just old. I mean, nowadays in Georgia, if you think about it, like our ceilings are what, 10 feet yeah. at least? Not something like right? anywhere from eight, nine, 10. Eight, yeah. nine, 10 feet. We're back in the day, like it, it, it's funny because when I would go back home to visit, yeah. like I could touch the ceiling yeah. in my shop, <laughs> it was so low. And I think that once you- used to you, hit your head on the one on the chandelier. Yeah. And so I think they're really, number one, starting with you just becoming exposed yes. to something mm -hmm. other than what you have become so accustomed and familiar with all of your life, which is like Philadelphia housing. And there's no shade, no slight mm -hmm. into Philadelphia housing. It's like row houses, most of the inner city ones. And it was like, here was for the audience. So 55 and older is really focusing on people with one level of living, mm -hmm. zero entry, um, showers, stuff where you can't really trip over things. Now you could get a bonus space upstairs and we did look at that as an mm -hmm. option, but I personally started to think like this is really happening when I sent her those videos because you almost every night she would, you know, cause we- like, You must have watched the videos like five times. I did, I, I watch it every night. I watch about five or six times. She would watch it and it would be, cause like you FaceTime her every night pretty yeah. much. And I would hear and see the excitement in her face. And then I remember it was one night, it was probably, I think it got really serious because we did go under contract in October and would tell people what that process was like, you flying down and stuff and probably people out there thinking about relocating or people that have lost somebody, what that what that process was like. But that September timeframe, I remember we were on all the FaceTimes and your mom was like, yeah, I'm, I, I showed it to this person, I told this person and like, you're telling people, I'm moving to Georgia, I'm moving to Georgia. And she, you're like, Ma, 
You're actually going to. I to think I even said, "Why are you telling people that? Yeah. Like, why are you telling people you moved to Georgia? Because in my mind, you're not really moving anywhere. Yeah. You're staying right where you are, and that's just what. Well. So fooled you. You did. <laughs> I'm fooled. So the process is, I think, very super. You know, very very exciting, super exciting. And so you did fly down here to like. You're just not going to buy a house sight unseen. So you flew down. I think it was around early October, early to mid October of. Now we're in 2021. Or yeah, she closed yeah. Yep, in July of 2022. Um, so talk to the audience about what that was like, actually, that first time you came and then being described uh, what, the, what the process would be like to actually select a lot and build a home. Well, it's very scary. It was very scary for me. I was trying to be, you know, Miss big girl, you know, but, um, and even though I knew you guys knew exactly what you were doing, yeah. even though I didn't know what I was doing, right. cause I never had a house built from the ground. So I was just taking what, whatever you lead, I was taking it. Yeah. And, um, I remember, um, for me, the exciting part was when I made the decision to come. Mm -hmm. When I came down and I actually walked through the model, mm -hmm. um, I was, I was saying to myself, Caroline, are you really going to, is this really going to be your house? This is not going to be your house. No, no, no. I, I kept going through that phase. Like, right. you know, then I was like, this is so different from your house. Yeah. Are you going to be able to live here? Oh my goodness. Look at this. Look at that fireplace. Oh my goodness! Well, what is that fireplace? I was, <laughs> I was, I was doing all kinds of crazy yeah. things because I didn't have a fireplace. Right, yeah. So um, I went through that phase, and and um, which was very, very exciting to me. Yeah. And that's when I started telling everybody about yeah. the house, sending the video to everybody and stuff. But people were just like, you. Nobody thought I was going to yeah. actually uh, come. Um, the most exciting piece of, of believe it or not, the exciting piece for me. Um, was when I actually paid the five thousand dollars for the down for the loan to secure the secure that, what they call earnest money or construction yes. deposit. That was that was <laughs> this that is was really it was the real moment. That yeah. was for me. That was I. You would think somebody gave me that money right. because I was so excited, so excited, so much so that um, I kept calling um, uh, Joyce. And asking her, did you get it? How come I don't get it? You ain't sending nothing right. back. I <laughs> well, they cash it. Now, Joyce is the on-site on agent. agent. Most yeah. communities yeah. have on-site agents. Yeah. And I remember the process. So we're looking at the map and the model, and we're starting to look at what they call lots, right? Mm -hmm. And so how exciting it was, and we have actual visual evidence of this. We, we I think I videotape, my phone is probably filled up with like, thousands of photos and yeah. videos of this experience. And our audience at Great Homes ATL that followed along, people still come up to us this day and say they followed every step wow. of awesome. your story. So from this picture that we took on the lot, lot, talk about what that was like seeing this Georgia clay, this piece of dirt coming from Philadelphia and saying that this, this is my house that's gonna be built. On here. What well, was if I could feeling? ask before before you answer, if I could ask though. So, besides the house, yes, it's a whole new experience that you're building a house from right. you know the dirt to a house, but you're also now thinking about a completely different transition. You're going mm -hmm. from all that you've known and have been completely familiar with in Philly to the only thing that you have familiarity with in Georgia, basically myself. Eric and Mark, mm -hmm. what was the, was there thoughts of excitement? Was there thoughts of fear? What, yeah. what were your thoughts with the house and now new area? Like what was, what were you just fear. thinking about? Yeah, fear? It was fear. Um, it was fear for me because it was the unknown. You know, it was just the unknown. Like um, I did get to meet a couple of the neighbors um, that would send me pictures when they would pour the, the, this or Slap, they would do yeah. this or whatever. They said, oh, they poured this today. Or, but I still had that fear of the unknown because that's different than 
once I move into the house. Right. What's going to happen? Yeah, these people might have been just giving me pictures of telling me this, that, and the other because I'm not down here yet. But once I move into the house, are they going to talk to me? Mm -hmm. Am I going to have friends? Am I going to be able to communicate with them? Are they going to like me because I can't change? Right. So are they going to like me for who I am? You know, those type of things were going through my head. And so when I was staying with you guys, and because you guys, you know, had your business, you getting up going and doing your thing, mm -hmm. you know. So I was home a lot by myself. Yeah. So I would definitely be like, is it going to be like this when I move? Mm -hmm. Am I going to be in the house by myself Quiet, all the time? I don't have no transportation. What's going to happen? You know, so it was definitely a fear mm -hmm. um, of and, and a, a deep concern as to, you know, Am I gonna really have to be getting up, flying back to Philly to be to be with people, to know people? Right. I was gonna ask that. And so, so when you move down here, so obviously your friends and family, for the most part, are in Philly. So, was there ever a point of like, did you did you miss Philly, and did you miss all of your friends there while you were in this sort of state of being fearful of what's to come, or are you still? ready to take on that fear head on and just adjust. I, I, I think I mentioned to you, you know, way back, I was a little concerned because I, when I moved, when I came down with you guys, I didn't miss my house. Yeah, I remember, but you, I remember you saying that. I, I didn't miss my house. And that confused me a little bit because I'm saying, living in a house for 35 years, I should have missed my house. And then I remember you saying, well, mom, did you take pictures? I said, no, I didn't take any pictures. I had pictures already in my phone, but I didn't take any pictures when I moved, no. Was that because Curtis Senior was no longer? I think yeah. that might've been part of it, Mark, because yeah. I, don't, I, I still don't understand to this day why I did not miss hmm. my house. I did not, it was almost like when I came April 21st, when I got off that plane, and I came to you guys, I, I, it was almost like, you know, what house in Philly? Hmm. But, but, now that you, but now that you've been here for almost two years, has that changed? Do you miss the house now that everything is kind of like settled? And, and no, are... I don't miss the house at all. That's my confusion. Hmm. I do not miss 22nd Street at all. I, think... I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know whether because toward the end, I was so agitated and aggravated by some of the things that was going on yeah. with me there. I don't know what it is, but I don't miss 22nd Street at all. When I first came down here, um, as you know, I play cards every week, you know, weekend, I play cards. Um, and then even toward the end, I started, I switched it from every week to every other week. Mm. Um, I miss that part of because it was an activity that well, I Well, you missed the people yes. more than you missed the house. Right. And I only missed some people. I, it wasn't like I missed everybody. I mean, I missed some people. I missed my sister because we would have a lunch um, three days a week and we would have dinner every Sunday right. together. So I missed her. You know, um, I missed some of my closer friends. I missed them, but it wasn't that I missed them because I talked to them every day anyway. So when you put your, your deposit and your earnest money down, you basically were saying that you were going to overcome whatever those fears were. I basically point. was saying that I'm sure my family here in Georgia, such as you guys and Eric, would make sure that I would be okay. Yes. That's, that, that alleviated some of my fears because I said, I know that you guys would make it okay for me as much as you could. So, and, I, and what I mean by that is, you know, you wouldn't let me stay stuck in the house every day by myself or and those type of things. So I knew that no matter what, for example, if the community didn't take to me, you guys would still see me that I would go out with you or come stay over here sometime, whatever. Mm -hmm. I knew that you guys would make it okay. Let's talk a little bit about... Because uh, there's probably a lot of people out there that, you know, oh, I don't know if I want to start over at in my 60s. I don't know if I want to go to an area I'm not familiar with. So medical, medical stuff, what was that like for you to um, not know, probably couldn't even put a pin in the map of where you ended up being, which was Pauling County, yeah. Georgia, 
the thought process for us when we started looking at that community was what was going to be close to because Eric was shopping for a house at the time. Mm -hmm. So he was also looking in that county. We are in Douglas County. So we wanted someplace that was close enough to you, but mm -hmm. not too close where you could just. Ooh, <laughs> that was his thing. I want to be so, so close. You see? You see? Okay. I can. I can. But. <laughs> Um, no, but, you know, talk to, talk to, talk to people about those kind of concerns that somebody yeah. of that age might have when it comes to medical and all that kind of stuff. With any age, you, you have to take chances. Yes, absolutely. You just have to take chances. Um, I was a little bit, it was a little bit easier for me, I must say, to take the chances because let's just talk about my medical. Mm -hmm. I've had breast cancer, I've had three open heart surgeries, mm -hmm. and um, a whole slew of other little things going on. But when I made a decision to come down here, again, as I said, you know, Curtis has always been there for me and very always been very supportive of me. Um, right away, you guys went to talking to people about doctors, good doctors, bad doctors, where they located, that sort of thing. So it made it so easy for me when he looked up and said, you know, they got this doctor, they got this doctor, they got this doctor. So for me, it became a matter of choice. Right. So everybody may not have that, and they may have to do more of that on their own, right. but it still doesn't mean you shouldn't take the chance. Was there ever any point um, from which you decided I'm going to do this to where enough doubt set in to where you started to maybe rethink, maybe I'm doing this too fast. Or did you really stay planted firmly in I'm doing this and there is no other alternative? I think I mentioned to you at some point, once I made a decision to come, I never looked back. Yeah. I never looked back to say. Well, because you had challenges. Like there's one challenge you had and we didn't talk about it yet. So the one challenge you had was that so you had already put your earnest money down for the new house, mm -hmm. but you still hadn't at that particular point even put your current house on the market for sale. Right. And so I think when you started when you started entertaining that process around what that will look like, um, it was very different from all the other experience you had had in real estate as far as how you bought a house, how you sold a house versus like where we are now in 2020 or 2021 and how people sell a house then? Like, was that all like- Well, it was, it was yeah, it was, a, it, it was in my thought process, but I also knew that the, based on the price range of the new house, I knew that I had enough money to buy that house until that house was sold. Yeah. You know, it wouldn't have been like, I would have been able to uh, 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 buy Take, another house right, at that right, time, right. but, I'd still had enough money okay. to buy that house, even without the sale of that house. But I think that's part of the story is, is that because you were so diligent and you might not even known it at the time, but buying in the low end, working mm -hmm. your way up the ladder, right, and then working your way up the ladder in your job, um, you said you had this extra disposable income right. and throwing more money at the mortgage mm -hmm. to pay that off earlier. So it's a wonderful position to be in where you had the flexibility if I wanted to take a mortgage and if I didn't want to. And I just want to say this, and I want to say this because a lot of people will look at this um, interview or, or listen to this and they will say, oh, well, you know, she bought her first house and her houses were dirt cheap. Right. And that's why you were in the position to do that. And I, and I will say to that this, yes, at the time you bought your first house, values were significantly less than what they are today. However, your your mentality and your attitude would have still yielded similar success in mm -hmm. that just because you started to flourish in your professional career, you didn't see that as the opportunity to then say, oh, I'm making more money now. I'm a vice president. I'm a CEO. A C let me go buy that million, go dollar, buy the house. million dollar house. Right. You said, oh, now I'm going to beautify the current house that I'm in make it more valuable. and make that house more valuable so mm -hmm. that when you were done with it, which in 2022 you were, mm -hmm. you had now accrued so much appreciation yes. Yes. in the asset that you had and had paid off at that point mm -hmm. that it made it worthwhile. That's so, a true lesson. I that's guess. the true yeah. lesson. The true lesson is for you know, people that are watching, it's like, 
If you find yourself buying your first house or your second house and, you, and, and something like your circumstances change for the better, a lot of us like to think, oh, it's time for me to move on up mm -hmm. and move on out. Mm -hmm. Let me go to the Upper East Side or, yeah. you know, Midtown, Bucket, whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. And I think the real lesson is, no, just because you move up right. professionally doesn't mean that everything else around you has to move up with it. Maybe right. if you kind of keep everything the same, you might realize that you've always been living right at your means. And this is your opportunity to live below your means. Yeah. So put you in a position years later to mm -hmm. where you can actually say, now I'm going to go and really live at my means. Because if you remember too, that very first house was a house that this wasn't this brand new house. Right. Right? This was a house that needed work. Right. And he had to only get it because you knew somebody and it was mm -hmm. owner financing. So know where your numbers are, where you're at in your life, because you don't know. You can start off single and then have, mm -hmm. you know, work your way up the corporate ladder, work your way up your entrepreneur ladder. Um, you have kids, you don't have kids, whatever the situation is. Today's situation is not going to be tomorrow. And if you always and if you always are living in today's situation for today, I I, I could be wrong. People can challenge me, but I don't think that there's really much room for you to thrive in the future because you're so focused on today. How do I survive mm -hmm. today? When it's like, no, like think about like, well, if I do this today and make the sacrifice now, yeah. I might be in a position in five years where I can go buy something that I want outright cash. Well, okay. I do want to say to the audience that, you know, um, and even though, like you said, Mark, maybe, you know, I wasn't thinking along those lines that you, you know, you're stating, but I can say that I did have to have a thought process you did. because if I didn't, there is no way that I would be able to survive today mm -hmm. because even now where I'm, I live in a brand new home built from the ground, I love it. Um, my medical expenses exceed somebody's mortgage. Yeah, yeah. You, have to, you have to take that as a consideration. You know, and if I did not plan accordingly, plan accordingly and say, I know that this, this, and this, um, I, I wouldn't, I just, I wouldn't be able to survive. I wouldn't be able to get the medications yeah. and the machines and things I need. I wouldn't be able to have, I just had a test done and just the copay was $1,400. Wow. And I have to have this particular test done every year. So before you get the second one that, or the next one, the other one has to be paid. Right. So there's just no way if you don't have something. Right. Set up. You can't, but, you can't. You know, I think, you know, your story is the definition of the value of real estate, right? Because if you had been renting all those years, right? Say you rented all the way up to you, to everything happened with the death of your husband. And, and you were, because of the decisions you made, because the investment that you made, it enabled you to at least make the move because when you, pay rent month after month, you're paying it to a landlord. So let's talk about what was that experience like listing this house? What did you have to do to get it ready in Philly to make this move down? I remember, you know, putting it up. I remember you guys telling me, well, you know, mom, you're going to have to paint them wall, take them animals out of there. <laughs> you're going to have to do this. I remember like it was yesterday. When she says animals, and she means statues. <laughs> I mean statues. And, I, and I, I remember saying, I'm not changing anything. I'm not doing it. Just, as is, I'm not doing it. Right. And I, you guys were right, you know, in terms of, you know, maybe I would have gotten more for right. the house had I painted all the walls right, white. Right. Um, but I decided that um, as long as the loss would be minimal, mm -hmm. I would take it. Mm -hmm. And I said that I made that decision based on the fact of how much I paid for the house yeah. initially and how much time. I had already put into right, the house. Right, right. Losing a few dollars would not damper, put a damper on that. You were, time frame too, time frame. Well, you were, you were, you were so far ahead. Right. right? Because like yes. you said, what you paid for the house, you paid mm -hmm. it off 30 plus mm -hmm. years earlier and the house was paid off. Mm -hmm. So really at that particular point, you were pretty much going to make a profit no matter how it stood. Right. Uh, I always like to make a joke because I remember, um, and your realtor will love us for this, but I remember when, you know, we're, we're real estate professionals. And so, we're not licensed in Pennsylvania, so we can't buy or sell real estate there. 
but we definitely can advise you on kind of what you should be asking a real estate professional before they list your house. And I remember that, um, you know, you, you chose a friend, you chose a personal friend to list your house. Uh, and I cautioned you and I said, well, mom, you have to be careful because when you use a real estate professional, that's your friend, they sometimes will list your house as a friend and not as a real estate professional. And at the time, I don't think it made a lot of sense to you what I was trying to say. Um, but in hindsight, I think what you learned is that when you list a house with a, with a friend, that's a friend first before they're a real estate professional, they typically will be your yes men. Yes. They typically right. will tell you when you told us, Mark and Kurt, I'm not painting my house. I'm not doing this and I'm not doing that. A real estate professional that's not your friend would have said to you, well, Mrs. Russell, if you don't want to do those things, here's where I think we're going to land with a list price. price right? But when you list your property with your friend, your friend's going to let you say whatever you want to say. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Don't worry about that. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do this. Whatever you don't want to do, we're not going to do that. And then they will still come to you and say, well, what do you want me to list your house for? So when you had said what you were listed for, Mark and I were kind of like, um, good luck with that. Yeah. Right. But we don't bash other real estate professionals because we all are in the same thing. But it never said well, I think for all Because we were looking online of what, you know, something comparable to your house. And like you said, it wasn't until you went yourself to go look and saw how they opened up rooms and put the white cabinets mm -hmm. and the white paint is that people are so visual, right? And I think, isn't the person that, that, that ended up buying your house ended up putting their own twist, right? Because um, you, you've seen the whole right, house. And, 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 uh, right, and they put their own twist, but in putting their own twist, and it is their twist. twist right. So I can't it's knock it because it's right. their twist. It's their right. house now. But putting their twist, when I went to see that house, to me, the house is damaged. <laughs> <laughs> because, yes, they knocked down, they made it, uh, all, open. all open. They knocked down the archway, so there's no separation. There's no formal dining room. There's one big room. They made it. They made it. What today's like selling concept, concept would be an open concept. Open concept. Yeah. Open concept. It's more open than even here. Like you, this you got this here and mm -hmm. this. It's just it's one, one big room. one because the house obviously is smaller than yeah. this. So it's just one big room. And then um, some of the things that they did, I just didn't feel the need. Why, why did they do that? Um, the bathroom downstairs, uh, they went down there and they they moved the laundry room from the back to the front. <laughs> and and I'm like... We could tell this is really bothering her. I'm like, why would you, I'm like, why would you do such a thing? But then when you look at your house you your that house. you picked you out and have... Would you... But no, the house that you're in now is the house that you want. Let's talk you, about it. Let's talk about let's that. Let's talk about so, this house. So, so you, this, the story is you did sell that house. You did go under contract. But before you even sold it, you had to go to what's called a design center. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a wonderful time. <laughs> yes. With you. you came to. <laughs> you and her you came, did. You came for one day. I did. Uh, one day. Um, that, was my, I think that, was that was my threshold. Choice. That was my threshold. Yes. One day. So <laughs> talk about the excitement of walking in to that design center. What was it Amy? Was her name? Was it yeah, Amy? Was really nice. Amy? Really nice. She mm -hmm. was really, really nice. In your wildest dreams. And did you have any difficulty? Like, was it almost too many decisions for you? I just wanted everything. <laughs> when I went in there, I wanted everything. Everything I saw, I wanted. Here's where I ran into a problem. Mm -hmm. I ran into a problem because when we looked at the model, yeah. I had it fixed in my, my mind that that would be my house, right. the model. Right. Not knowing that everything in that model was an upgrade. Right. You, you, right. I, I, you know what I mean? You didn't know things about like lot premiums. Like when I saw, when I saw, mm -hmm. I'm thinking the house have to have floors. <laughs> so when I saw the floors in there, I had no idea that those floors were upgraded floors. Right. I'm thinking those that are you had to, as part of the that. design center process, you get to pick the floors that you want. So it's or, very specific. Or I could keep the floors that are the just the basic, basic floors, right. which didn't look like the floors that was in the model. Because you're not a basic type of chick. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, well, that floor don't look like that. So, of course, my son-in-law here explained everything to me. And he said, well, everything that you saw basically was an upgrade. He said, now, 
you know, these floors over here upgrades. This is your basic floor. Well, the basic floor floor was as thin as, a, a, yeah, a, yeah. you know, That's so cool. nobody wants that. So you go and you pick out, you know, what you want. And then naturally it's a higher up, upgrade, you know. Were you still excited though? Because now, you know, at this point you put down your, your earnest money deposit. So now that you secure the lot. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, and they give you, so for folks that don't know, you know, you, you go under contract for the, the price of what the base of the house costs before you put any type of upgrades or anything mm -hmm. into it. There's a base price. So now you are under contract for this house at the base price. Mm -hmm. So you get into the, I get to go pick out my designs where you're now learning, oh wait, all the things, most <laughs> of the things I want are upgrades. Upgrades. Are you- Even the knobs for the cabinets. Are you still- <laughs> Are you still excited at this point in the process or yes. is it starting to feel more like, oh, it's not as exciting as that? No, I'm really, really, really still excited. I'm over the top still. Um, not that I didn't remain excited, but when my excitement started to say, oh, wow, is when um, I got hit with the 45000 additional additional dollars. Yes, because uh, sometimes what happens when you go to the design center um, they're worried for a lot of reasons, appraisal purposes, all kinds of stuff. Um, and the builder is the one that is like fronting all these costs, right? Yeah. So a lot of times builders in their design centers, they require their 50% deposit, right, 50. 25%, some are even 100%. Mm -hmm. So as you're starting to see that number creep up, you're probably like, okay, I, this is where I have to, do I really need, can I do more, you know, culture right. model or grain? Right. Can I do quartz? Um, but I remember the, the things that were important to you, you, you had to have that kind of, uh, you know, gourmet kitchen, mm -hmm. you know, meaning because that's not that the heart of the house for a lot yeah. of people. And they were just going to give you like a little oven or something yeah. like that. And she definitely wanted the double ovens and stuff like that. I remember flooring is always important to flooring you. Flooring was up. And that was a funny story because... This was again during the time period of supply chain issues. Yeah. And so we got called a couple times time, yes. saying we cannot get this or they discontinued it or there was an issue with the manufacturer. And I remember how disappointed she was. Yes. Um, oh, I love those floors, but we made another trip up there. And even though she was nervous about it, so it ended up being now people can't mm -hmm. stop talking about those floors. They're right. absolutely yep. gorgeous. Floors turned out to be really nice. And, um, the other thing is I thought that the window, the bay window in my bedroom, yes. which was just, to me, was just a highlight of the entire house. Yes. Um, I thought that came with the house. Right. And only did she say, no, the, the, the bay windows, that's a upgrade, a, a, yeah. a $3,000 upgrade. Yeah. And I'm thinking, for a window? But then... Yeah. That's, it was what, what I wanted. wanted. Right. It right. was what I wanted. And then, you know. That covered back porch. And then the back covered back, back porch. porch. My son-in-law says to me, well, everybody needs to get this. You know, you really, <laughs> you really need to have Don't this. Don't trust the real estate agent when it comes to upgrades. He said, it really, you really need to have this. I mean, this is a must. You really need yeah. to have this. And I'm saying, okay. And I'm so glad that I made the decision to get that. But that was one of the things in my head. I'm saying to myself, do I really want to pay $4,000 for a screen? Right. But this is what I'm saying to myself. Yeah, but it. now, no, it's, you that can't control it's worth more than four. It's worth more than four thousand dollars to be able to sit out your back porch and not have to worry about bugs biting you. And uh, it was really, really thank you, son-in-law. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and you I have to give you credit for the knobs yes. because what happened was not all builders do this, but we were actually able to go to a granite and quartz uh, store yep. and pick out the the, uh, the actual slab. The one you had picked out. You know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of bougie when it comes to my car. Right. Top. So <laughs> you said it looked like an apartment. Um, so I said, these actually look like apartment ones. Like, and so we actually did a FaceTime because at that time you were still trying to sell the house up in mm -hmm. Philly. And uh, I think they came out good, but it actually changed the whole look of the yep. kitchen. So that mm -hmm. something as simple as knobs became... A thing. A thing. Even the cabinets, the cabinets were upgraded. They changed those twice, remember? Right, right. So, yeah. what was the feeling like? Um, you got to, you moved down with us in April 2022. They started building probably around January. It wasn't late December, early January. So, I would do my little videos and every weekend I would go out there and do videos and pictures. What was it like when you 
actually came because at, at this time it's like framing stage the house windows i think were about to go in what was that like pulling up and seeing wow this this dirt that was here back in october it's no longer what, what was that feeling like I, at that particular time the feeling was like i was overwhelmed i just thought it was just i was just it was just beautiful i just thought it was i said oh this is my house you know and I was so, so excited. And I remember um, right after that, one of, I, I can't remember, it was one of my neighbors called me and said, they took your windows. I remember that. And yeah. I just started crying. I just started crying. I'm like, why did they take my window? There was a shortage on my And you guys were trying to explain to me about- The shortage. Uh, the, and... the, not only the shortage, but whichever house is going to go closing first, right. that's what they, I ain't want to hear that. <laughs> And so my neighbors were the same way. We asked them why they took your window. So, you know, um, so that right, that was a, like a, uh, a like a little downspout Down, for yeah. me. Because um, you were supposed to close uh, May, right? Well, Wasn't yeah. The, so, the you know, just to not go back too far, but so the Eric and you were under contract at the same time to build right. new houses. Mm -hmm. And so both of you guys obviously relocating, we had to figure out like shelter for you. Like where are they going to stay mm -hmm. in the meantime? Right. So obviously our house would be it. Mm -hmm. And so we, Mark and I planned it the way the schedule was going to happen where there wasn't supposed to be an overlap. It was supposed to be Eric's house was going to be done first. It was supposed to be March, I believe. Yep. Which was March. So he was staying with us at that time yeah. and he was going to be out and then Ironically, right when he was ready to leave, oh, was you'd coming. be coming down, staying with us, and then everything was delayed. So we ended up with this overlap of having my mom and, and my brother <laughs> living and in the house mom. with me. It was a full house. It was a full house for Ariana. Ariana was here. Yep, she was here too. Yeah. And the thing is, Dog, too, I guess yeah. maybe part of the good thing was at least Eric was on the road after a while. Yeah. Yeah. That that helped out. Um, but I didn't when I when I was here. I didn't get to see much of you guys. You we were, guys, we were you guys were really working hard we look, back you then. Look, you're hearing it firsthand from the per We are booked and busy. busy. Like, Thank no, God. when you were here, honestly, no. You we guys were, were very busy when I was here. I mean, you guys were always on the go. There were some mornings I would hear the you guys get going, and it would be early, early. Yeah, and early. then I would see you guys like late in the afternoon. So yeah. it was really, it was really, you guys were really busy. What was it like witnessing? Because you know, we try to explain to our. I mean, my family was still up in Connecticut um, and you were up in Philly, but what was it like actually being here to kind of see our business grow and, and just that feeling building a house and then having your son and son-in-law represent you and you know that. Well, that right, because up until you, that point, you, we FaceTime regularly, so we right. talk. So you just kind of heard, I guess, oh yeah, we're busy, we're busy, we're busy. But now you've been living with us. So you, like you said, you got to see a witness firsthand that you would wake up and like hear us. But then by the time you came out, we were already gone. Right, it, and it was, it, and, and that was um, not a surprise, but that was different for me because mm -hmm. in my, again, coming here, May 20, uh, April 21st, mm -hmm. when I came in my mind, again, I had this other Picture, mm -hmm. picture. I'd be hanging out with you guys. You guys be doing. I didn't have that picture that you guys would be out on that road. Mark saying it's your boy Mark again. I, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I didn't anticipate that. So, um, but after the first week or two, I guess maybe after the first couple of weeks, I got used to it. Yeah. And then I started to build my own days, and I would take Uber over to the plaza yeah. and start doing things like that. So, Thank but you, um, it was. It was the. The fact that you guys used to take me over to see the house every Sunday, um, we would have breakfast and mm -hmm. you know go see the house. I look forward to that. Yeah. That I look forward to every week because I would say, "Oh, I'm going to see the house. I'm going to see the house," you know, and stuff. So I, 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 I remained excited. I remained excited. Number one, because I had never, well, of course, I never had a house built from the ground, and to watch the process of that, yeah. you know what I mean. And I remember. Um, uh, uh, at one point, uh, I was the, the agent, the, the, the agent for the builder calls me and says to me, 
um, we, you don't have a, a garage door. The garage door is bad. I said, I don't care. Go to Home Depot and buy one. <laughs> I don't care. Get me a garage door. I need to move into my house. Yeah. And that's what made it delay a uh, couple well, more we months. Well, we delayed. Yeah. I think your original close date was supposed to be March. Right. 2022. Oh, 2022. 2022. And then we got a call. I remember we got a call in like late February saying, hey, we have to push the closing all the way till July. But by that point, we had already planned for, okay, Eric was on his way out. So this yep. would just be, but then Eric got a call saying, yeah. hey, yours is also being delayed until right. July. Was windows so then yep. Mark and I, I was like, oh my God, like I'm gonna have my mom and my brother here. Oh, I'm not even ready for all this. But it was an amazing time. We had, we had yeah. so much fun. I think, yeah. I think it was awesome to have everybody on the room. It was. Because there sure. were times that when Eric would come off the road, there were times we would yeah. eat together. Yep. Family stuff. dinner night. It, family and, dinner. It, yeah. it, it was really wonderful. It was really a nice time. Let's talk about the actual day, closing day. You know, this amazing story. Now you're here, you're here in Greater Atlanta, and now at your actual house closing day and at the attorney's office. What was that feeling like? Well, one, before you answer, if memory serves me correct, what's significant about her closing date, it's a couple of things. One, I think her closing date is the same day as our closing date on this house. Mm -hmm. And two, I think your closing date That's was right. actually the- On my sister's birthday. Sister, sister. The, the, was it my her? older sister's yeah. birthday, the 14th, yes. Yeah. Wow. Who had passed while yes. you were in process mm -hmm. of getting this house. Yes. So it was the July 14th, yep. right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never forget no. that. So we, we, you know, had what's called a final walkthrough. So you make sure everything, and he went, there was not everything was absolutely perfect at that point. And so your son had a, you know, give the builder a little hard time, but they ended up making good on everything. But going to the attorney's office, signing that paperwork in your name and getting those keys. Talk about what that day was like. Well, let me tell you, when we first went to the walkthrough and we saw some things that should have been done and weren't done and, you know, and, and stuff. And, and yes, Curtis Jr. gave uh, the builder a hard way to go. First of um, all, I did not give the builder a hard way to wait, go. Can we so, be clear? Well, you let the builder know that, that his job was not done. These things had to be done. Mm -hmm. Right. But I was so excited that I had overlooked all of those things. Hey, I remember that. Um, I was just so excited the fact that I'm closing, this is my house. And when you walked up to the house, it was so beautiful outside, all the landscaping. That's all I saw. Inside, there were some things that needed to be done, all sorts of little things. And I knew they had to, but that was just so far down the road for me. I just was so excited. I can say that until you experience it yourself, it's no description for it. It's, you okay. can't describe your feeling about how it was. It was so exciting for me that, you know, this woman, grown woman, I just wanted to scream mm -hmm. and stare, look at my house, look at my house. It was really a, a, a feeling that I just can't. And then I do remember saying, you know, Though I know if my husband was living, I wouldn't have been experiencing that. Um, I remember feeling that I wish he was here to yeah. share it with me. I remember feeling Which that Which is way. kind of odd because you obviously, we've talked about this off offline, but knowing that daddy would not have right. ever, not only made the move, but he would not have been a supporter of or encouraged you to make the move. Um, it's it, it's ironic that even in that moment when you close, you still want it and wish that he could experience what you were feeling, even though you know that. Yeah, I mean, because you have to remember this man was part of my life. Yeah. You know, this this man had been part of my life. I was 13, getting ready to turn 14. You know, I was 60, what, 64, 65. Yeah. So there, therefore, I know what he he would have said, I'm not moving down there. Or I'm not building no house. You crazy. What's wrong with you? But I know that it didn't stop me from ex wanting him to be part of that experience as I was going through because it was such a happy time for me. I mean, it was really a happy, happy time for and me. And you even said, I think you whispered something into your mom, uh, mom's ear that day, if memory serves me right, something about your father on that that closing day, maybe how no, he, proud did. he would be. He would. What happened is when I got the keys, you know, I was holding the keys up and you reached over and you kissed me and you said, daddy would be proud. 
And I, oh. I, I thought that was just, oh, it was just, you know, and I'm saying he would have been proud in his own way. Yeah. He always um, was very proud of me, yeah. all oh, of my yeah. accomplishments, but he, it, that he, it had to be his own way. He was not one to stand up in front of a crowd and say, oh, I'm proud of my wife. But he would say, oh, I'm proud of you the weirdest time. Mm -hmm. Like you wouldn't even just expect anything coming out of his mouth. He'd be sitting at the kitchen table. And he said, oh, you know that talk you did? I was very proud of that. You sound really nice. It's, it's funny because, you know, I, I'm able to learn a lot from the conversation that we're having. And, and hopefully you are too. Absolutely. But what I've learned is that I'm a lot more like my father in ways that I didn't know that I was. Mm -hmm. And I think from your perspective, being on the receiving end, a lot of my, you know, shit, <laughs> for lack of a better term, um, I, I'm the same way a lot. You know, when it comes to what we do, um, a lot of it plays out on social media and, and you know, for marketing and, and so on and so forth. And we do, as a brand, put a lot of our um family business yeah. or just things out there for the public but one of the things and mark will tell you is that i hopefully you'll tell him i actually am one of his biggest if not his biggest cheerleader yeah. um privately meaning like i'm sooner to tell him in my way i guess in my time that i'm really proud of your latest accomplishment, or I'm really proud of that new deal that you got or whatever it is. And it's not necessarily my way that just comes organically to say, let me run to social media to let everybody know in the traditional way, how proud I am of my partner. Like but what, I, what I've heard you say is that it did not diminish or discount the value or the the extent of the pride that daddy had in you in your ability mm -hmm. it was just the way he chose to convey it was more in a private way so that it was more meaningful for him for you to understand that he was and so i think now that i have you know my mom and my spouse here it's an opportunity for me to let you know that i'm not the one that's going to run to social media every time that something great good or phenomenal happens for us or for you yeah. i'm not the guy that's going to say hey guys let's like like you more, more, yeah, right? i wouldn't mm -hmm. use your lot but more importantly i'm just not that guy yeah, and that's what the relationships all about. i'm not that that's spouse and so yeah. taking this opportunity to let you know that i'm always super proud of your accomplishments i'm always mm -hmm. super proud of what you've done what you contribute to the brands the business to my life to all of this, I'm always proud of that. But I find the meaning in letting you know that I'm proud of you without the audience, without right. everybody else having yeah. to know that I'm proud of you. It's more important to me to know that you know that I'm proud of you, regardless of whoever else knows. So, so well, and, and that's, that's really how your father was. Like, your father would not be, um, in an audience, like some people like to say, I love you in front of people. Right. But he would just come past and hit me and say, I love you, fat mama. Something, you know, <laughs> like, like, like some women would be insulted. Yeah. Like he would just come past and just hit me. I love you, fat mama. Or, you know, yeah. like something like that. And then, you know, somebody like I have friends that would find that insulting. Right. Yeah. But for me, that was what he did. It was endearing. That, that was, was just, your love language, right. fat mama. That's, that's how, that's, you know. And if I, I just want to share a quick story too is, I remember, uh, because I, I think you guys made two trips. We had lived in an apartment uh, in the Virginia Highlands area at one time. And that was the first time your father and mother came down. Right. And then a second time when they, we had the our house. first house. Mm -hmm. We had a koi pond. He loved, you know, the koi pond and yep. stuff like that, the fish and stuff. Um, and I'll never forget, you know, Ariana was probably, I don't know, she probably was seven, eight years old at that time. Um and they we had like a little cookout area and your mom and dad were sitting at that table and your father said i've never seen uh you meaning you uh so happy yep and mm -hmm. that meant a lot you know because our relationship is not probably there's so many differences between us obviously being a gay couple but also like 
uh, different races yeah. and, and you, just don't know, you always hope that the your own parents accept you with the, with right. those kind of dynamics but to actually hear out of your father's uh, mouth to say you make my son happy yeah. it meant mm-hmm. so much mm-hmm. yeah. and to this day if you want to show the audience too you have not taken off his chain I have uh, not so since you yeah you've actually um, when he passed mm-hmm. um he, this is the chain he always wore. Yep. So he every was alive, day. he wore this chain every single day. And I remember during COVID, obviously I couldn't go there as we mm-hmm. talked about, you went and um, they knew that he was about to transition. They basically had to remove all of his mm-hmm. personal garments. And so this was one of the things that you took off. And when you gave this to me, when you came down in September, um, I have not taken this off since. And so he won't do it. it doesn't matter um, mm-hmm. the di- it clashes. It doesn't matter if it clashes with the diamonds, the rings, whatever it is. My dad is always going to be with me. And so what I'll do is, fun fact for the audience, what I'll do is if it kind of doesn't go with another part Put of the outfit, inside. I will tuck, tuck it, it, I will turn it, I will shorten it, I will do whatever I can, but I'm never taking it off. Um, and so I definitely keep him, you know, very much with me. So he is in Georgia. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, even he, if he didn't want me. Even if he didn't want me, he is here. <laughs> but I want to, you know, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to get story. sad yeah, because yeah. It, it is something that could open up that door. I don't want to do that. Um, but I will say, so how is life for you? In your new community. In your new community. Because now I think you're approaching almost two years. So you might Get be. The 14th of July. You might be reaching Georgia peach status. So. <laughs> oh, I, I think you have to be here two years at least. To right. be a peach? To be a peach. In July, it'll be. A two years. Peach. July, be, so I'll how, be a peach. How has life. No, been? no, no. Technically, April the 21st, I was a peach. Because April the 21st, mm-hmm. I was actually here two years. Let's see, in real estate, we kind of buy it when you build When you build a house, you a house. <laughs> right. So in, 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 in just shy of two years, or coming up on two years, how has life been post yes, this new uh, chapter. post Philadelphia? Mm-hmm. Just how has life been in your new chapter um, in Georgia? Let me just tell you, I I cannot tell you how living in um, this type of community has been for me. And when you say this type of community for the audience. Active adult, adult community. Mm-hmm. So we didn't put her in a senior citizen yeah, home. This is not geriatric. No, this is it's not, not like, get rid of mom. Yeah, so it's, it's not No, my community is really active, just active adult community. And I, I, I say this because when I lived in Philadelphia, I went from one room to the next room I went downstairs. I would have lunch with my my sister three days a week and dinner with her on Sundays. That was as far as I would go. I hardly ever went out. I hardly ever did anything. And I'm still in retirement, but I hardly ever did anything. When I moved to this community, I cannot tell you if I don't take a day for myself and relax, I will not have one. They love they you over there. We do everything. We have day trips. We go on other trips. We have socials every month. But does it feel does it feel genuine or does it feel like y'all are a bunch of old people that are just having to wipe with each other so we have to make the best And you establish up? a real friendship. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I think that we have, I mean, we have such a bond there that when somebody gets sick, we all get sick. Hmm. It's just like we have such a bond. When we lose one of our community members, it's a loss to us. You're we, like little ETs you know, over there. You know, we just... <laughs> we Remember just, when the ET is like, I feel what you feel? Yeah, yeah we take kid. care of one another when we get sick. You know, you don't have to worry about cleaning or cooking or doing laundry. They come over. We have a, a group that does laundry. We have a group that cooks for you. We have a group that cleans for you. We have a maintenance group that comes and change your light bulbs. We have everything in that community, and it is genuine. We have a portal. We, we ask. We, it's not mandatory, but we ask that if you want us to know, we don't need to know your actual illness, but put in a, a portal that you have an illness and requires attention. What that does is they have them check on you. If yeah. they don't see you or hear you in 24 hours, somebody's looking to see where the heck you are. Yeah. And so, yeah. And, and, and coming down here, like I know one of your fears was, you know, once you stay with Mark and I, you realize just how busy 
our lives are. Um, and now you're on your own in your own community. Do you have any sense of loneliness or do you? No, I have no sense. Of, <laughs> I don't have time to be lonely. They're always checking on her. I'm, yeah, I, I like they, they check on me when I'm out. In fact, I find myself telling them when I'm going out overnight to let them know that I'm out overnight. Um, you know, um, you what, know, what's your favorite activities over there? My favorite activity, honestly, gossip is, is not an activity. <laughs> Bunko. Bunko is my Bunko? thing. Bunko right. is my favorite activity. Nice. Um, Bunko is one of the uh, uh, card games that we play on Mondays. And um, it's, it's, it's just one of my favorite. Um, you guys are always, it feels like a quick funny story, too. So when she first moved in, you know, I think you guys have like potlucks or all Every these, month we have a, yeah, a different thing. Yeah, everything else. So mm -hmm. we. You know, trying to bring, help bring down some of the food. Actually, I think I was making Chicken. my potatoes to one, one, to one holiday, mm -hmm. which is a you did make it for cooking. me. Mm -hmm. And so we brought it down. These people were having a ball. <laughs> they were doing jello <laughs> shots. <laughs> yeah, like, that's what we're talking about. Okay. <laughs> well, it was it was it was touching for me. So last year was your sixty sixth birthday, right? Yes. Not to put your age out there, but it's out there. I'm proud of being 66. Yes, yeah, I know that you look through a lot. Through, yeah. So <laughs> look great. last year, your 66th birthday, you had a birthday party. Um, was at your house? And I was thrown off because obviously we were gonna attend. So we show up and you know, it's the neighbors and stuff like that, and we were very friendly. Um, and then one of your neighbors, um, Connie, I say your name, hey Connie. Um, <laughs> went and got a tequila bottle and was ready to like throw down with shots. Yeah. <laughs> they can party. Y'all can party. So active adult for people that are watching, it, it does not mean senior citizen home. No, it absolutely does not mean not. any of that. Absolutely not. It means truly like active adults yeah. above the age of 55. Right. So, And I will say this, I'll throw this in here. Uh, I don't drive. I don't drive anymore. Um, and I can tell you that my neighbors, my community members, they actually schedule to take me where I need to go. And stuff. They wow. actually, this one will say, well, you got her Wednesday, I got her Thursday. You got her Friday, I got her Monday. So it's a true sense of community. It's a true sense of community. And I never even thought in my wildest dreams it would be the way it is. I just, so I just never thought this, it. Because I know that there is, there's somebody and there's probably more than one person there's somebody that's sitting at home right now that hopefully is watching behind the front door. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they might not be social media savvy. They might catch things here or there, but there's somebody that's thinking about wanting to start a new chapter in their life, whether it's because they've lost a spouse or significant other, whether it's because that's all they've known and they're ready to take a chance and do something different. Um, you are somebody that has overcome medical issues, whether it was heart issues, breast cancer survivor, losing your spouse. What advice would you give somebody that's thinking about, do I really want to start a new chapter or do I really want to just continue the chapter that I'm on? What advice would you give that person that's sitting there toying with the idea of relocating, buying a new house or something like that? I would simply tell them, take the chance because it's worth the risk. Do you miss your old life in Philly? Because you had most of your life was in Philly. So the first question is, do you miss that? And the second part of the question is, how how different or in what ways has life been different from living in Philadelphia versus living in Georgia? Okay, well, the first question is, do I miss my old life? No, I don't miss my old life because the people that were part of my old life, I brought them into my new life. Mm -hmm. So I don't miss anybody that was part of my old life that is not part of my new life now. I don't miss them because the people that I wanted to be part of my new life, I brought them with me. What's for you? Because everybody's experience is different. Right. For you, what's been drastically different favorably from living in Philadelphia for so many years to now the life you have. Yeah, maybe like what could you have not even imagined what? I could not have imagined um, building a home from the ground up that I, that's just, that was just not even nowhere in my mind. Even, 
even the thought of even moving, I'm sure building the ground would not, building the house from the ground would not have been part of that. Um, I just think that it's been a, the, 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 the concept of just being able to deal with a, 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 a whole different world of people mm. for me has been uh, a positive change. Living in this city, um, not to say that the people that I know or don't know are bad, good, or indifferent. It's just moving here in this community. Um, I've got to see a whole community mm. made up of almost the same people, mm -hmm. if you will. They, they, age brackets it's and a, stuff. You know, like well, everybody. There are so many different years. But, they come, many, yeah. but they come from different walks They come from life. all from yeah. different walks of life, but they all seem to be on the same page. Mm -hmm. And it seems so funny because I now fit on that same page. Yeah. 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 And I know that had I been still in the big city, I probably wouldn't be on that same page. Yeah. You know, I just feel, and I just feel, I feel blessed. I feel highly blessed that um, that I've been afforded a way to see a, w a different way of life and be able to enjoy it and still be in somewhat good health to enjoy it. Yeah. Well, I, I can say, um, you know, that I'm very grateful that you're here. Uh, I think that nobody, nobody wanted you here more than I did. Um, and I think that I wanted you here when, you know, once I had gotten to a place of what I deemed to be stability, right? Um, I was like, oh, now I've kind of, I've been the wild child. You know, I, I left home for the audience for context purposes. You know, when I left home at, in 1997, I think it was, when I left home in 1997, I never moved back. Right. And so I always tell people that when I left home, when I left the nest in 1997, I got to like, you know, go to college, do all the things, be a wild child, have baby, you know, do all those things. Go to Disney for a year. Yeah, worked at Disney World. I did all those things. But when I came back to Georgia and was like, okay, I'm now settled in my sort of adulthood, I felt like, well, now I want my family to be closer because now I would have the time to kind of invest in my family and stuff like that. Um, and so nobody um, is is more appreciative of you being here um, and grateful than, than I am. So you're here now and um, <laughs> for as much of a pain in the butt as you've been since your arrival. Um, I enjoy our family like dinner nights. I, I do. enjoy, you know, going to the movies together. Just like, just it's great having family and, and being able to share these what this all taught us is we're not promised tomorrow yeah, and that, to be able to share these moments and especially this show that will always live on, I think yeah. is a, a gift. You know, well, I, sure. I do. I do have to admit, though, I do have to admit not to put pressure on. Um, I do know that you guys are extremely busy. I know you guys are always doing something and, you know, and I'm very proud of it, the fact that you guys don't, you know, let any grass grow under your feet. You're always doing one thing after another, keeping yourself up. But I do miss the home good trips and going out with you, Mark. I yeah. do miss that. I do miss well, that. I'll do better than that. <laughs> I'm selling a lot more like, in Paulding County. <laughs> I'll be over there. I'll just finally, share with the audience... You built this house. What's your favorite rooms? What, what What's your favorite well, aspects you know, of the house? Well, you know, my, um, though when I say my bedroom is my favorite room, it's not because I like to stay in the bed. It's because I have this fantastic bay window. It's just a highlight of that. my house, yeah. if you ask me. I just love that window. So I have these two chairs in my room, and I like to just sit there, and I look out the window to my beautiful yard. You never had a yard before. Now you I have know. a beautiful now, yard. I, and I have grass. <laughs> and, um, and then, uh, and I love my outdoor, my uh, back porch screened in. Mm -hmm. um, I like to sit out there. And thanks to my son and son-in-law, I have a nice TV out there that I can watch. <laughs> yep. mm -hmm. And I go out there, you know, the nice mornings and I fall asleep and I wake up by afternoon. Wow. Nice. So it's just really nice just to relax. And I think that I am living the true life of retirement. Mm. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you get to do that because I was the guy in the video when we were filming the floor plan that later became yours, said in the video, God, my mom deserves it. I wish she would do it, but I don't think she ever would. And so the fact that you did 
it mean it means so much more to me than you probably will ever know. Yeah. Um, so at this point in the conversation, um, we do like to ask our guests, and you're a special guest because as my mom, you know me in ways that the audience, you know, they quite frankly don't know me. And you know, you've gotten to know Mark over 15 years yes. um, in different ways. Mm-hmm. But nonetheless, we don't want to take away any opportunity from any guest. So we will give you the opportunity to ask. Um, is there anything that you want to know about myself, about Mark, about us as a collective, about us as Greater ATL? Is there anything that you want to know? Um, and we'll be happy to, I think we'll be happy. <laughs> we'll be happy to answer anything you want to know about us or just share with, the audience. share with the audience that we didn't really touch upon during the conversation. Well, it's nothing that I really want to know about you guys, but I would like to make a statement and say to you that I was very, very, very happy when you guys decided to take a real vacation when you went to the Dominican Republic because Mm -hmm. where you thought about all the other things that were impacting you, you know, uh, your, your, your being uh, overwhelmed with things and doing things and this working on your nerves. I think a lot of that had to do with you needed a break. And um, I just think that, you know, what you saying you were going to that Dominican Republic and all inclusive and just sitting there having a fire, it it really did my heart good because Mm -hmm. I felt like, thank God, he's now getting a break. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think people will realize you know, it's not just selling real estate. That just sounds like how oh, they sell real estate. Yeah. We are business owners, and it's a whole nother level of responsibility, stress, pressure. Yeah, because I was able to see that when I lived here. Yeah. And so, you know, and then, you know, you know, I'm still, even though you're a grown man and you, you know, you have your own life, and I'm still your mother. Mm-hmm. So when you have heart problems, this hurting you and this hurting you, where I may not say, oh my God, Carpetta, you know. I still worry. I worry. So, you know, uh, when you said you were going on vacation, I said, oh, thank God. He's finally getting a real vacation. That's when I said, don't answer no phone. Don't talk to nobody. And I did. You did it. You did it. I definitely ate good. We slept good. We enjoyed the beaches. That is so good. That is really, really good. It's, um, I think, you know, the the whole lesson of this podcast, uh, what we wanted it to be are... Everybody has a journey. Everybody mm-hmm. has a story to share. And I think there's always going to be somebody out there that doesn't have the same story, but can relate to, right. to somebody's story or be touched by it, be inspired by it. Uh, you know, for, from my perspective, I can't uh, thank you enough for, you know, joining us today. Um, I feel <laughs> like you are the best mother-in-law oh. in the world. Mm. Um, Make I, sure you don't cut that part right, out. Even though I know you, <laughs> you didn't really like me the first time you met me. I don't know why you keep saying that. I absolutely, I absolutely did like you. He was just like, nah, I just, I, I tease about that. But, um, you know, especially for me that, um, has my family out of state. You had your mom out of state, your dad out of state, your brother. Um, it's it's amazing how when you know um, people cross paths, and not every family is is lucky enough to have like in laws that get along and brother in laws and you know aunts and uncles and stuff like that to feel welcomed. I can't thank mm-hmm. you enough. I love you. <laughs> I love uh, you too. I guess I owe you a home goods trip. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. No pressure. Um, but no, nah, I, I, that's how I personally want to leave it for my end. But how about you? No. Um, yeah. It, it was a good interview. It was a good conversation. And I think that um, one that obviously I'm going to have that live out here forever to say that you know, I, we as a collective have reached a point in our own success where I now have a platform to have my own podcast show and to say that I've been able to interview my mom on my podcast. Um, and helped her build a house. And helped her build her house and a part and contributing to your next chapter in retirement. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we don't always see eye to eye and you know that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we 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 definitely clash a lot, audience. But 
Um, no, we clash, but I think that we always know each other's intention. We always know that it's rooted with the best intention first. Mm -hmm. And so for those moments where, you know, I'm not your favorite son or you're not feeling me or whatever the case is, just know that like I, the love has never stopped. It's never been put on pause. Um, I love you, you know, to the moon and back. Um, don't regret a single day that you've been here in Georgia. Uh, it's actually made me really, really happy. And even in the chaos of everything, um, I still have managed to find peace in the fact that, well, my mom is now close to me for the first time in my adult life. Um, and that means more to me than anything else. So thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I love you, too. And I don't have... Um, Though we do clash sometimes, what is, we do clash. I don't have the luxury of being able to say um, that you're not my favorite son because you are my son and you will always be my son. And there is no favorite or under favorite. You're my son. And, favorite. And <laughs> so um, it doesn't matter. I'm going to always be your mom. Yep. It doesn't matter what happens. I'm going to always be your mom. And I will always do whatever I can and be the best I can. Um, um, always. I'm never going to tell you anything wrong. I'm never going to do anything wrong to harm you because I am your mother. And with that, and also our most special client. So <laughs> cheers to that. Another episode of Behind the, Front Behind the Front Door. Love you. Mm -hmm. Love you. Love you too. If you haven't already, make sure you set your notifications and subscribe to Behind the Front Door Podcast.